Uh, it was a point that Gordon Darcy made in the paper today. If you take the Irish 23 that played against Italy, of that 23, four foreign players, 19 through the school system, zero through the club system. I refuse to deserve a lot of credit for a lot of things, uh, but the truth is they've been gifted a privately funded model. And we hear of the great work being done at club level, but proof being in the pudding, that's not a great stat. It's not great. Can I just jump in one observation? Yeah. There was a full set of fixtures across four AIL mm. leagues at same, last same Saturday. Time. At the same time, the game kicked off. Like how that can be justified at any level when there's only 18 league games a year for the clubs. <clears throat> it's just so ridiculous. And they're talking about trying to get you know, the true fans into the ground. The true fans are there supporting their club because they want to support their club. So there was no, none of them are watching Ireland and they're not at the ground. You know, it's just, they're not travelling to Italy or if it was in Lansdowne, the same. Like, the, you couldn't have a bigger, um, you know, kick towards the club game than playing club games across four leagues, across the length and breadth of the country at the same time the national team are kicking off. So I'm fully with Darcy. Like it's 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 well managed in terms of PR, but it's it's opti- the optics and all of that. They don't wash when you schedule games at the same time as the international team in an 18 week season, and the the international team play 10 times. There's do the maths on that. I don't know. There's probably 38 alternatives in the year to put on those games. So no, there's no doubt there's a huge over reliance on mm-hmm. what the schools do and the elite schools and. I'm sure the RFU and even Leinster are fully aware of this. It'll change, obviously, now that Tyke Furlan's back in the squad and before that we had Sean O'Brien and Jamie Osborne. So there are players coming through the club system as well, the youth system. And the AIL clubs, they still play a very important role in the development of a lot of these players because they're the ones introducing them to the game at five, six, seven, eight years of age through mini rugby. And that often gets completely overlooked because the system is... It's such a personal fiefdom within the school's game that once they get these players, they're not allowed to go near their clubs again, Mm. which I think is inherently wrong. Uh, I really do. I always have done. But either way, there's no doubt Ireland would not be as good as they are now, but for the fantastic facilities that some of these schools have and the own professional-like work they put in with the the players and the products that then come out are much more ready-made for the academy or in some instances almost ready-made for professional rugby coming out of school like never before. The schools are producing prototypes for the professional game and you know the great academies like Ajax and Barcelona Ireland rugby has probably 25 academies you know that they don't need to fund in any way because the schools are producing them so they don't need the club game anymore and that isn't going to change but one thing is I suppose if you're going to compete at the highest level, be number one in the world, there's too much risk in losing. So what happens now is it's getting like the NFL. The top young players come out at 18 and they get into a sub-academy. The really talented ones kind of leapfrog straight into a, an academy. When myself, O'Driscoll and Darcy left school, we got a full-time contract. That was it. There was none of this stuff happened. You got one or you didn't. And everyone else went and played with their club and enjoyed it. Now you get all these super talented, uh, I call them automatons. They're like robots. They're physical robots. They're all media savvy trained. They never put a foot wrong. They're polished. They're athletes. And they give up rugby because they don't get into the sub-academy. I was coached, that same time I was coaching Jack Conan, there was five or six of Jack Conan's pals who were exceptional. And I was like, what's the story? Why won't you come training at the moment? I was trying to think, is it an attitude thing? They're like, no, I hate rugby. That's why I'm not coming to train and I'm not going to continue playing it because they've trained five times a day, uh, five times a week or nine times a week since the age of 13. So it's getting to... Not a, everybody loves it and, and, and no, devours no. it like Caelan Doris did. I think no, he played no. five years in a row on Junior Cup and Senior Cup, so, Tron, Black Rock sides and was a boarder. He clearly devoured it, loved it, but... I'm sure it's a turn off the, for the, a lot the, of life, the lifeblood of the clubs are, you know, you go back to the 80s, most clubs were filled in six or seven teams. Now most clubs are filled in two or three because 
the young lads who come out of school at 18 or 19 just give up. They're like, I'm not doing that again. I'm yeah. after coming through. I'm institutionalised for six years. <laughs> yeah. Right. And also, if they don't crack into an academy almost immediately, they, well, I'm not going to make it as a professional, therefore, what's the point or in carrying on? what's the point in going having and a few yet, years with it, my pals? Exactly. I, don't, I don't see it, but... Yeah, yeah. and yet, actually... <clears throat> An awful lot of players are groomed for a year or two or three years by their experiences in the IL while they're in the academy structure. Lots and lots. I, I'm going to a game the weekend. I'm, I go to a good few games. There are lots of very good young players who are in the academy stroke development system or even on the fringes of, AIL, of provincial squads who play. And the AIL standards have gone up in the last few. Tony Smith, who's been coaching Trinity for 22, 23 seasons, and he said, Jerry, this is the best top flight. I think we saw him at last season. And in part, that was actually a quirk of COVID or certainly to do with getting rid of the British and Irish Cup which I wouldn't if there was going on in the back garden I wouldn't open the curtains I wouldn't cross the road to watch a British and Irish Cup game clubs mean something they're reared there yeah. their dads played there it's just much more meaningful and they will play a lot of club games particularly front row forwards tight five forwards in the one, two, three years they come out of school and there's lots of them playing there at the moment and if you go through a lot of that Irish squad yes they came through elite schools more than but I'd say an awful lot of them played a good bit of rugby at AI level yeah, and so we don't need the Provincial A or British and Irish Cup no, coming I, back I totally agree and the other, the other there's so many things around this like you, at 18, 19 you're very sheltered you go into a, a senior men's team you're mm. playing with 36 year olds you, lads will take the piss out of you lads will teach a few things different age groups different sizes and shapes different outlooks on life you know a lot of these lads coming out of the private schools are, are institutionalised you know to a degree and I mean that respectfully to the institutions they're doing their best but they are you know and you're getting immediate exposure to all shapes and sizes from all walks of life at club level yeah. and the, the last thing is just I always have have looked on in, in astonishment that Brock Purdy coming into the NFL this year as the uh, what was it called Mr. is it Mr. Insignificant or something the last guy in the draft there's a name for it um, Mr. Irrelevant Mr. Irrelevant sorry but he he hit the ground running and all the, the pundits said the reason he hit the ground running was because he played at a lower level university but he played every week for yeah. four years yeah. the amount of lads I saw who I coached or I were peers who were trained as professionals at 18, 19 in academies, their actual exposure to real life game time, you're talking about five to six games in a year. So they're professional trainers and it does not matter what you do. You cannot replicate game intensity at whether it's AIL Division 3B, it's not the same as a training session with the academy. And there's a young lad called Jed Tormey actually in, in my club who's come through the Leinster schools, Leinster 18s, 19s. He's been jumped up to start on the the senior team in Belvo in Division 2B I was chatting to his dad and, and him saying get as much game time as he can and lo and behold about three weeks after three IAL games he gets into the Ireland under 20 squad so he's gone the circuitous route versus the academy route that's good to see mm. from my, but mm. the reason he's getting that is because he's playing Division 1B 1B yes. yeah I was thinking that yeah, you know yeah, sorry yeah, I said the yeah, wrong yeah. league but he's at 1B level but he's getting game time and yeah. exposure that matters mm -hmm. There you go. That was uh, but a taste of the full rugby conversation. As usual, you can get the full chat wherever you get your podcast. It's waiting for you right now.